Hi and welcome to another episode of Cafe Chronicles. I'm Steve. I'm Dan. And today we're going to be working on the Cafe Racer budget build. It's an exciting day because we're going to get this girl back on her little toes. So let's get stuck in. For the record, we're going to torque them. Once we have everything on down, we'll get the torques back and we'll make sure they're good. doing a 530 conversion. This came with a 630 chain. So that is the width between links uh, divided by 30 seconds. So 630 seconds to 530 seconds, 630 seconds being uh, something I'm terrified of math. Uh, so what that does is it means that there's going to be more teeth around the circumference here. This is a 38 and this is a 33. And if I stack them over top of each other, they have the same outside uh, circumference, but there's more teeth because the distance between teeth is going to be shorter because of the 530 versus the 630. So the benefits that you're going to get having more links is that you get kind of like more leverage over the chain. So you'll have smoother operation and the chain's lighter as well, which is kind of like going to a lighter flywheel in a car. It's less rotational mass that you need to deal with. So in theory, you should notice smoother operation at lower speeds, which anything that we can do to modernize a 40 year old bike is gonna be fantastic. This is like some sort of an unholy ceremony. I feel like Dan is chanting to the gods at the moment. Why is that? Hmm? Why is that? Um, some sort of rubber gasket for rotating parts. I believe it um, protects against the ingress or egress of various things. Like a seal, I suppose. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. So one thing we gotta do is we gotta take off the primary drive sprocket here. We've got to put it in gear. It's not been in gear for a year, Dan. Yeah. Let's put it in gear. Mm -hmm. 
So you can see slight difference here. The diameter is going to be the same if I stack them end over end, uh, but the spacing between the teeth is going to be different. So we haven't changed the gearing that much as far as the ratio between drive and driven is concerned. Uh, we're just using a bit more of an advantageous chain. So we'll wait, we will flatten down the edge on that. It's like a little aluminum kind of washer behind. It's to lock in the, the nut in place, but we won't bend that over the little tab until we've torqued it to spec. I think we're ready to... Oh no, we're not doing tough faces. <laughs> I think we're ready to actually get this girl on her feet. We've got our, our wheels ready. We've got the new discs on there and we're ready to just basically pop them on and see how it's gonna go. We have the new stand, well, the painted stand on there and uh, I think we just try and get it on. I think that's a win. We've got some new shoes on it and they're looking spiffy. It's nice to see it back in its wheels again. I think it's always a good feeling when, you know, you take a bike apart. There's that scary part of you that's like, will it ever go back together? The answer is yes, <laughs> but it takes a bit of work. <laughs> it's standing again. So Dan's gonna like it because in his garage, you're gonna be able to actually move it out of the way and it's not gonna be in your way all the time. Absolutely. And we didn't put the chain on there. We're going to, we'll do another episode on putting on the chain and aligning the rear wheel as well to make sure that the alignment's good and everything like that and make sure that the chain tension is good and all that kind of good stuff. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay safe.